Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Uh, we're going to continue with our tutorials in Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And uh, what we're going to do um, is follow through with our database creation. So what we have done so far is uh, we've set up a server instance called Local DB Demo. We've also created a database called uh, Student Tracker. We're now going to add some tables to our Student Tracker. Now, the obvious thing that we're going to do first, is if we to do this as well, just so you knew what I did, is I right clicked on tables and I clicked table. Okay, we're not creating a file table, we're to creating a table. And uh, this is a student tracker, so the most obvious thing we're going to have is a, is a table called uh, students. Okay, and we have a few logs to uh, do with this table. Uh, first of all, is following some naming conventions. Uh, this is this table is called students. So naturally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, an ID called student. Now remember, every row in this table is one entity. It's a, it's a, it's uh, it's one student, not students. So our um, our ID column is going to be calling called student ID. Okay. The other thing at this column is, is it's going to be an integer, okay, uh, which means it's just a, a whole number, okay, anything above uh, zero in this case, uh, not an unsigned integer, but an integer. So it's not uh, de decimals, anything like that. So we're also going to make this our primary key, okay. And we have to set the identity specifications to yes, and it increments by one, which means that every row that we add is going to be incremented by one. This number will start at one, the next one will be two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, the seed element says that every time we increment, instead of incrementing, uh, it, you know, we, we can seed it with a certain, certain amount of uh, data first, uh, but we're not going to do anything like that. Okay, some other elements that we, we may want to track here is first name, and that is going to be an NVAR char. Now, uh, I'm not going to allow nulls because every student should have a first name. Um, and yeah, generally 50 characters is pretty good. But in terms of database conservation or space, uh, although we live in a, in a world where we have a lot of space available to us, we've got to still think about how much data we, uh, or how, how big our database is going to be, because if we are buying space on a server, uh, the space does add up. So we're going to set this, in fact, to 25 characters. And likewise with a field named last name, okay, we'll also set that, uh, actually last names can be a little bit bigger, so let's just do 50 for whatever reason. We're not uh, going to allow nulls as well because we want everybody to have a full first name and last name, okay? Now, the other thing that we're going to track is uh, date of birth, okay? Date of birth, all right? This would be a, we're just going to put in a date here, okay? We're not going to be worried about, um, you know, what time they were born in this case. It's not that important. Uh, and we must have a date of birth. Uh, everybody has one. And what I also like to track is a few things. I like to have something called a date, uh, date time and a edit date, okay? Sorry, a create date and an edit date. Now, why do I have this? I like to have this so that every time something is created, I know when it was created, and at least the last edit date. Uh, if you were creating a more sophisticated database, you may want to have uh, an edit history table uh, that uh, tracks everything, every every audit trail that you've ever done. Uh, but this is goes beyond the scope of what we're trying to do. We're just tracking simple stuff when it was last edited and when it was created. Okay. All right. Now 
we're going to save this table and if you recall we're going to call it students okay now the other thing that I forgot to do here while we're uh, while we're sitting here is we because we are um, not allowing nulls that means we have to have data in here okay so our create date um, we are gonna have it so that it uh, automatically generates a date uh, as soon as um, as we create a, a, a data row okay so we use this little, uh, little default value here called get uh, get date that's a, a standard uh, SQL server uh, function called get date okay and you'll see that it's marked with a little asterisk there it says it has to be saved if I save it like that all right that should just update now there is um, uh, there is a feature that I have turned off here and let's just see if I can uh, recall where it was it's in designers and it is this little feature here prevent save saving changes that require table recreation okay there are certain times when if you have edited uh, a table um, that it, it may need to recreate the data uh, and that can be that can damage your table so so it, it it's not something I would uh, I would advise you do often but what we just did there would have uh, if this check mark was on it would have uh, prevented us from saving it so I've just turned it uh, off uh, so that it doesn't ask us all the time it doesn't prevent us so we'll just cancel out of this okay so in order to see our table um, sometimes you what you may have to do is push the refresh button it has already done that for us it's, uh, so we didn't have to uh, add anything now the next thing I might want to do is um, uh, add a couple more tables let's add some more relationships uh, to this let's add uh, addresses so if I add address uh, an addresses table naturally the file uh, name is going or the table name is going to be addresses which means the ID column is going to be address okay the data type once again is an int it's a primary key you see it automatically turns off the allow nulls and uh, our identity specification is yes okay now address uh, will have street name okay and that will be an nvar char 50 we'll just go uh, kind of large enough it should be okay street name street number okay and this is going to be an nvar char as well because we really don't know how numbers are going to be formatted may we call it a number but it may, may not in fact be a number and we'll give it a short uh, entry of about 20 okay uh, we are in Canada so we are going to be looking for state and province okay uh, so I call it province state and that is also an NVAR char now you may be coming up with a question of uh, you have um, you're we're giving it a uh, they're giving the user the ability to just type in any any format which will make it very difficult for um, uh, you know data mining purposes later on but we're going to set it up like this temporarily and then what we're going to do later on is uh, add some relationships that create um, a related table for province and state and uh, for uh, countries so for now we're going to keep our country or our province to 20 characters and it really doesn't need that much as well and then same thing with country we're going to do n bar char and uh, once again we're going to make that kind of short uh, we'll make that 20 as well. We will not allow nulls. Everybody lives somewhere. Uh, and on that. Now, last but not least, we'll do um, postal code. Okay. 
Now, we want to think globally already, so we do want to, to uh, understand that um, um, not everybody has a postal code, per se, and it's always not always uh, six characters. So uh, we are going to put this to 20 characters just to, be, just to be safe, and we will not allow nulls. Okay. One more thing, let's let's throw in something like a unit number, because who knows? Uh, we could put that in street name. We could put it in. in uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's keep it. Let's keep it simple. Let's not get too difficult here. Now, the other things that I like to do as well, of course, on every table, I do like to track, create date, and edit date. Okay. Same thing as before. We're gonna set the default to get date, and I'm just gonna copy that this time, so I don't have to type it again. Okay, paste it in, and we're pretty good. Okay, now one thing I forgot. Now this is. I recall here, this is pluralized here, uh, but this one is uh, done with an ES. Um, it doesn't have to be an ES, but uh, when we start getting into um, data frameworks, uh, sometimes they will automatically look for the proper spelling. So we're just going to do uh, addresses um, as the uh, plural name. Now, haha, one thing that I did forget is we are going to have a relationship between the, the address and uh, students, okay? So here's where if we were, uh, if we had actual data in here, it would actually have to drop and recreate the table. Um, so that's where that option of prevent uh, data table recreation would have uh, kicked in. So here, I'm gonna just add in this uh, student ID. Now, if you recall back in students, all right, the table uh, shows that student ID is an integer right here, okay? So it has to be the same data type right here. And we will not allow nulls because obviously it's a, uh, it is a um, relationship between the two. Okay, let's save that. <clears throat> and we'll close this. And you'll notice here it's not it hasn't showed up right so we do have to push refresh okay right all right now uh, we've got two tables that are in here and uh, in our next lesson we're going to start talking about relationships uh, so remember to like and share and uh, catch me in the next video thanks a lot guys take care